Hello everyone, uh, this video is part of a series of videos that I'll be making on some intermediate and advanced concepts of SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. So if you're new to SAP CAP model, uh, please go through some of my beginner videos or other online resources including SAP CAP documentation. Uh, so in this video, we'll look at connecting to remote services in a seamless manner. Uh, so here I have an OData service right here uh, built on the CAP model. And if I go to this uh, expand option, so I'm, uh, I'm retrieving the employee's data and I'm also ha I also have an expand clause on orders. And this gives me all the employee data as well as uh, all the orders uh, uh, that belong to that employee. Uh, so for each employee, we are getting their order information. Um, so now only the employees, this entity, this employees entity, uh, this belongs to the local service from the re same process. Uh, the orders entity, on the other hand, uh, it belongs to an external service. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is data that is coming from Northwind O data service. Uh, but you can see how we have a seamless integration between a local service and also an external service. Uh, so in all these cases uh, where you need to integrate with a remote service, uh, you will be using this uh, cds.connect uh, to connect to the remote service. Uh, so this is key to building extension applications. So if you have to build an extension application uh, with any of the SaaS applications that SAP provides or non-SAP products, uh, let's say, for example, if we have to build an extension app with the SAP S4 HANA uh, success factors or Reba, uh, this is key, uh, this uh, CDS Connect, how you connect to the remote service and how you can retrieve the data. And uh, being able to integrate to the external service uh, along with your local service. Uh, so let's uh, see how this is done. Uh, we have touched upon some of the concepts in previous videos, uh, but uh, we will look at it in more detail here. Uh, so let me go back to my Visual Studio code uh, and let me quickly uh, stop the CDS watch. And I'm going to check out uh, the branch one. So in branch one, what I want to do is uh, uh, branch one and two, uh, basically the very first step in doing this uh, integration, the seamless integration between a local service and a remote service. Uh, so in my branch one, uh, I just want to build the local service. Uh, so here, if you see in my schema.cds, uh, I only have the employee's uh, entity uh, and then I have uh, a CSV file to initialize some uh, data. Uh, let's go to the second branch. Uh, this should all be very familiar to you. Uh, so let's go to the second branch and in the second branch uh, we are just uh, doing the uh, service, the local service itself. Uh, so here we have uh, the remote service and uh, we are exposing this employee's entity as an OData service. Uh, so here if I do CDS watch, uh, this is uh, just going to have uh, my employee's entity. And this is, uh, like I said, our very first step is we're just going to build the local service and uh, this is how we would uh, build the local service. And here if I go into my uh, local host 4004, um, you can only see the employees, and if I click on employees, I can get the data for employees from the CSV file. Okay, all good and done, so let's go to the next step. So the next step, what we want to do um, is if I go to step two, um, I want to bring the remote service into my process. Uh, so uh, basically, I just want to make sure that I have the Northwind O data service uh, rendered along with my uh, uh, local service, which is the uh, which is th this service right here. So I want to bring the Northwind O data service uh, into this uh, same process. Uh, so let's see how this is done. Uh, so I will switch to the next branch. Uh, I will stop the CDS watch. Uh, I will do git checkout uh, branch uh, three in this case. Um, so, oops.
Yeah, so in this uh, branch, um, we want to bring the Northwind OData service into our process. Um, so the way we do that is uh, we go to the Northwind OData service. Uh, so here I would go into the Northwind OData service itself. And I want to get the uh, metadata file from here. Uh, so if I go into this uh, metadata file, dollar metadata and this should give me the metadata file so I would copy this entire metadata file uh, so I copied this entire metadata file and then here in my SRV folder I created a file called northwind.edmx and I pasted this entire metadata file here in this northwind.edmx file uh, so this is uh, right under SRV. Uh, so you can name it anything you want, um, uh, as long as the extension is the .edmx. Uh, so here I've uh, uh, I've copied the metadata file right here. Uh, and then the next thing what you want to do is you want to run this command. Uh, so you want to run this command cds import srv slash northwind.edmx. So the name of the file right here. Uh, so here I would say cds import port uh, srv slash northwind edmx uh, but i've already run this so i'm not going to run this again now what this will do when you run this command uh, is it will do two things one is it will create this folder called external for you uh, and it will convert this edmx file into a csen file and place it in right here in this external uh, folder. It will also place the EDMX file here as well, uh, but it will create the CSEN file and it will place it in this external folder. Uh, so that is key. And the next thing what it will do is uh, it will take some configuration details about this uh, Northwind data service. Uh, so here you can see that there is a, a Northwind uh, service that has been created uh, with the kind of OData v2 and the model as uh, uh, pointing to the uh, uh, EDMX uh, CSEN file. Uh, so here, uh, whenever there is an entry in this section, uh, so you can see that uh, there is an entry in this uh, cds.requires section. Uh, the application knows how to connect to the external service provider at runtime. Uh, so the kind property says it's an OData v2 service. The model pro property, it specifies the uh, CSEN file location. Uh, so the CAP framework, when it starts up, uh, it can reflect on this external API. So it knows that there is an external API because we have this uh, section under CDS requires. Uh, so when it, the CAP framework starts up, it will look into this file, CSEN file, and it can reflect on this external API and it will mock this service. Uh, so if I run CDS watch right here, uh, you will see that it is uh, going to mock the Northwind uh, service in addition to the local service as well. Uh, so we already have the local service uh, that is uh, being, the path for that is uh, 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 service slash remote. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you will see that uh, it is also mocking the Northwind at slash Northwind. So if I go to my uh, uh, go to my remote service right here, uh, to my local host 4004 right here, uh, you can see that uh, there is the slash service slash remote, uh, this service, this is the local service, and the slash Northwind service, uh, this is the remote service. And they're both in our same process. Uh, so we are able to bring the remote service into our process. Okay, so that's step two. Uh, let's look at step three. Uh, so in step three, uh, we want to combine the remote service into our local service. Uh, so instead of having two different services, uh, so I don't want two services, I just want a single service so that we can have seamless integration. Um, so for this, uh, let me go back to my code. Uh, let me stop the CDS watch. Okay, so let me move to the next branch. Uh, so git checkout four. And in this uh, branch, uh, what I want to do is I want to expand my data model. So if I go into my data model right here, uh, so I've added the, this section of code right here. Uh, so basically I'm referencing this northwind.season file and uh, I'm creating this new entity called orders 
and I'm referencing the Northwind uh, orders entity uh, that is already defined in the CSIN file. And because it is already defined in the CSIN file, I don't have to specify the data type. So for all these uh, fields, uh, these fields are part of the Northwind.orders uh, entity. Uh, so I just give some alias names, but I don't have to specify the data type. And also in my employees entity, I've added a new field uh, to define the relationship between employees and this orders entity. Uh, so there is a one to many relationship between the orders and uh, the uh, between employees and orders entity. Uh, employees uh, being a local service and orders uh, is part of the remote service. And then in my SRV CDS file. Uh, so I've also added this read only new entity orders. Uh, so exposing this entity as an O data service uh, here as well. Uh, so now that I've uh, done these two things, uh, so if I do CDS watch, uh, in fact, if I do CDS watch, uh, yeah, let me do CDS watch right here. Um, I can also just do CDS serve all. Uh, that would, uh, that's what. Uh, this is the command that runs when I run CDS watch. Uh, I really don't want the mocking uh, at this moment. Uh, so, uh, okay, so it's not mocking it, but sometimes it does mock the Northwind uh, uh, OData service here as well. Uh, so if I go here uh, and if I refresh, uh, you will see that there is only our local service, or at least it gives you the impression that it's just the local service uh, where we have the employees, uh, but we also have this orders, uh, which is actually from a remote uh, service. Uh, so what we have done here is uh, we've combined the remote service into our local service. Uh, but the uh, thing is, uh, the generic handler is not is not going to perform the CRUD operations for us. Uh, so if I clicked on uh, orders, uh, I should uh, get like an exception right here because uh, the generic handler uh, does not know how to handle the read operation on a remote service. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that in the next branch. Uh, so here I'm going to stop the CDS watch uh, and I'm going to check out um, branch five. So here we have to do the custom handler uh, so we can uh, do the actual read of this O data service uh, of this remote service here as well. Uh, first thing what I want to do is I want to go into my package.json file and this section was already there uh, but we have to add this uh, credential section. And this actually points to the O data service, how to get the data. Uh, now you don't, we don't have any kind of authentication here, but if there were authentication, you would provide this. Uh, typically you would use some kind of environment variable to connect to the O data service. So here uh, I've, I'm telling uh, the CAP framework, uh, this is how you want to get to this uh, remote service. Uh, once I've specified that, uh, I go into my remote uh, service.js. I've uh, created this new file right here. Uh, and this is where we have the custom handlers. Uh, so let's start with the read for orders. Uh, so we want to make sure uh, there is, uh, we can uh, uh, read the orders. So I'll also run CDS watch in the meantime. Uh, so for read orders, um, uh, what we want to do is we want to connect to the remote service because uh, that's where the data resides. Uh, and you can see that um, uh, we have this remote service and the way we connect to this remote service uh, is using this uh, cds.connect2. Uh, we've seen this in previous uh, videos as well, but here uh, the cds.connect2, uh, it takes a string and this uh, string Northwind, uh, this is the same string as uh, the CDS requires. Uh, so the CAP framework knows uh, when you say cds.connect2 and provide this uh, string right here, uh, it comes here to read all the config uh, values. Uh, you can also uh, specify the config values. You can override the config values here by specify, specifying a, uh, an object right here like a kind and stuff like that. Uh, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we can read this from the package.json file here it's, itself. Uh, so this is able to connect to this remote service. Uh, and since we've specified the credentials as well, uh, it knows exactly how to connect to the remote service. Uh, now, because this is also an OData service, uh, we can also simply say Northwind service dot run uh, and then 
we can use this Fluent API, this query language that we've seen before, CDS query language that we've seen before, uh, to actually get the orders data. So if I go here and if I uh, refresh this, uh, I should get the orders data. So this is uh, actually making the call and getting the orders data. Uh, but now, uh, what we also want to do is uh, we want to do the expand on employees as well. And again, we've seen similar thing in one of our videos before. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that there is an expand clause. Uh, so here we are making sure that there is an expand clause on employees. And if uh, if there is uh, no expand clause, then we are simply reading employees. Uh, but if there is an expand clause, uh, then what we are doing is uh, we are going through each employee. And for each employee, uh, we are getting the orders. Uh, and then we are getting only orders where the employee ID is equal to the employee.id here. So this is going to give us uh, just the employee, uh, just the uh, orders that belong to the uh, uh, the employee. Uh, so if I go back here and if I run this uh, command, uh, this uh, query right here, uh, so now we are able to seamlessly pull data uh, for uh, the orders, the local service and the remote service. We are able to integrate them and provide all the data right here. Uh, hope this helps. Uh, see you in the next uh, video.